Linton and upcoming changes to Linton is going to be the topic of this chapter of the business library, which is why I have Katie on. Katie is a LinkedIn expert with over eight years of experience, so she definitely knows her stuff. She even taught me a few things before getting on this call. Uh, good, I don't say I'm a LinkedIn expert, otherwise I, I would feel like a liar right now. But I know, <laughs> do know quite a few things, so you should definitely listen in. But before we get into the meat, this episode is, of course, sponsored by our free course about content marketing, so check it out down below in the description. So to start us off, Katie, like, what is the number one thing when it comes to generating business from LinkedIn? I think being consistent on LinkedIn has almost a secret sauce to it. So, for example, a lot of people might be on other platforms for hours a day, and that makes sense for that platform. With LinkedIn, however, it's no more than 30 minutes a day. And for most algorithm processes, it's just Monday through Friday. So it's not like you have to spend time on the weekends also doing that. You can be 30 minutes a day, Monday through Friday, as long as you have the consistency. People do, but I do like doing things on Sunday and, and Saturday sometimes because there's less people there to compete with. Right. So here's my tip with Sunday, because you brought Sunday up. I like to utilize Sunday to create my connections. So I'll spend about 45 minutes on a Sunday, usually when I'm binge watching something on one of those streaming apps, and I'm going to add new requests for connections for my first connections. I'm also going to add followers to my company page. And the reason I do this on a Sunday night is because Monday when people log in, they have these things that pop up, right? Maybe it's a notification. Maybe they actually know where to look for the My Network tab. And they realize that red number has four or five on it. And they're like, what do I have four or, four or five messages for? They click in it and they realize, oh, somebody wants to be a new connection of mine. Or, oh, Katie wants me to like the company page. So go ahead and hit yes, or go ahead and hit follow. And it allows you to build your company page quicker and your first connections more on an expedited process. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Well, while, whilst we're spitting facts, um, okay. can you correct me if I'm right or wrong? Um, but LinkedIn, you have a, like a limited amount of connections before it goes woo woo when you're banned. You, you, you can't really do this no more. I've heard that number is 400, at least with like automation. You can automate like 400 connections in a month. So yes and no, it depends on what your connection number is. So once you hit 500 first connections, then it opens up a little bit more for you. So for me, as the example, I had a goal at the beginning of 2024 to add 1000 new connections. I am 950 new connections already, and we essentially have four months to go. So if you do the math, right? I am definitely adding a lot of people. And the way I do this is I make sure I follow a three week rule. When you look at your connections you've sent out and you realize that you're trying to connect with Bob Hope, let's say, and it's been three weeks or four weeks, or maybe it's been six months, withdraw that invitation. By keeping your invitations, whether it's to be a new connection or a company page follower even, to three weeks and un, you know, three weeks basically is the absolute max for it. It actually allows you to kind of have a little bit more flexibility. So in theory, 400 could be correct if you're not really utilizing LinkedIn to the full capacity. I probably send out close to 600 requests a month and I'm about half of that I'm getting back as yeses. So I am very, rapidly now that I can fully embrace all of the new changes that LinkedIn has been dropping lately, I am able to do that effect effectively and efficiently, which is obviously helpful. <laughs> well, now you have kind of hinted at it. Oh, thank you very much for the nice bridge. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier for me. I don't have to come up with something creative that kind of mixes the things in between. What are the new changes? I know it's something about the internal score. Yes. Kind of related to the SSI score. That stands for Social Selling Index. 
mm-hmm. that's the score links and have for people just so to for clarification so september 1st usually is when linkedin if they're going to do any type of changes they're going to do changes and they're not going to tell you. They're going to let you kind of figure it out yourself. So the three big things that I have been informed of from some of my I spies, shall we say, that work for LinkedIn. One is they're really going to go back to the minimum of three posts per week. They had been kind of laxed for two posts per week for quite a while due to the pandemic and the recovery of the pandemic. But we're out of that enough months now as a global perspective. So some people had just gotten used to only posting twice a week and they were able to still have the feed they were used to, the scoring that they were used to. They were still being invited to even contribute to the various LinkedIn articles. And now it's going to be a minimum of three weeks, three times per week. So the way I look at it is either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, schedule out your posts, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because it just makes sense for a lot of people's brains. That way you have the consistency of those three posts every week. The second thing is that three-week rule I already hinted at, they're definitely going to put more weight, so to speak, to that three-week rule. And the more that you're able to keep on top of that three-week rule, the better it's going to be and the quicker your score can raise. The other thing for what Ever reason, the contact us button that we have where you can find out, oh, this is how I can email Katie. This is how I can call her. These are some of the other socials. This is her website. Those kind of things. That button for some people is going to disappear. So my tip is in the header you have for LinkedIn, put at least two other modes of communication for people to reach out to you. LinkedIn obviously likes LinkedIn, of course, but you're going to have a phone number potentially. A lot of people are going to put their email or a website as well. I would not recommend putting other social media handles or accounts. So your Instagram, um, maybe it's a Facebook business page, maybe it's another element altogether like a Pinterest account or even a blog. I would stick to a website, an email, or any type of communication for a phone call. Those are the three I would stick to, and I'm going to make sure my clients who utilize the LinkedIn optimization service I have, we're going to do that rule moving forward. Another kind of sneaky way to put it in is your about section. At the very bottom of your about section, you can basically kind of have a contact us block of information. That's another sneaky way to put it in because for some people, not all, But for some people, that contact button is no longer going to be an option for their profile. I'm not sure why, but as I figure it out, I will definitely keep you updated. (laughs) Good to hear. Good to hear. I guess just post a lot of content that LinkedIn gives you all the nice features. It's kind of how it feels like they're working. One thing as as well as while you were speaking, you talked about the free week rule, and I guess that's in a way of, withdrawing the connections as well Mm -hmm. how does that impact my scoring if if people don't accept the connection request or don't decline it just just let it float so if linkedin realizes that let's say that you and i were not connected right and we're both very active on linkedin if linkedin sees that you've sent me a request and i haven't dealt with it but i am on on a constant basis we both get dinged because you chose somebody who you thought was active enough and they just don't deem you in a weird way worthy enough for that either that ignore button or that accept a button. And in my case, my score would be dinged because though I've looked at it, because obviously they can check their own insights, right? They can go in and see that I've been to the My Network tab on a regular basis. I've seen your request but not dealt with it. I get dinged for my internal score for not actually building my network. I have an opportunity to build my first connections and here I am ignoring it, even though I see it on a regular basis. Now, obviously, because you and I are pretty active on the platform, we would see it. There are other people who really aren't. I have somebody that I've tried a few times to connect with her on LinkedIn because it's my best platform. But for her, 
it, it would be Instagram. If I communicate with her on Instagram, she's real quick about it. So the uniqueness is when I start requesting for people to connect with me, I'll spend a little bit of time to see when they've posted last. And if they've posted on a pretty consistent basis over the last 30 days, I'll send out that request because I don't want either of us to get dinged, right? But if I notice the last time they posted was six months ago, unless they are a lead for an actual client, I'm not going to request that because I don't want that internal score to get dinged because I foolishly am trying to request with somebody who's not going to say yes to my connection request. Hmm. Interesting way to look at it, right? Yeah. I, uh, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, it's good to know, but I do like to deal with people that send me a connection request within a few days. Right. I'm usually good, pretty good about it. If somebody just, like, sends me, the client. yeah. And what I like to do is also say, how many mutual contacts do we have? That's always how my brain works: is to figure out the mutual contacts because you and I actually have a ton of mutual contacts. If you had sent over my request, we probably have anywhere from 30 to 60 at this point, if not more, from one of the networking groups that you and I are connected into. So I would say yes. But if I didn't have that networking connection, I would do a little bit of investigating. I want to make sure that A, you're a real person, and B, you and I could add value to each other's network. Even if we wouldn't be good for a client partnership type opportunity, at least maybe people in my network would be of value to you and vice versa. That's how I've always exactly. looked at LinkedIn, right? And I, I've been on LinkedIn for 15 plus years. I got into it shortly after graduating college. Long, long time. Yeah. 13 years. I would have been 11. I wasn't on LinkedIn for then. No. Oh, oh my God. I didn't know. It's so I, crazy. I didn't even think about that. I, I, was, a, I, I was 11. Uh, I, I think that maybe I was playing Farmville and Facebook at that time. That yeah. might, I love uh, Farmville. Got a little Farmville. <laughs> I, I, I knew, I, that, was, that was the reason I got Facebook. I didn't want to connect with people. I just wanted to play Farmville back then. That was, that was the only reason, really. Yeah, I get that. And when I first joined LinkedIn, it was honestly because of a collegiate association I belonged to. I belonged to the alumni association from where I had recently graduated college. And all these big professionals, these power professionals in Denver, Colorado, they were on LinkedIn. And I just knew if I wanted a, a job, if I wanted a corporate W-2 status job here in the States, LinkedIn was a great way to build a network. And here I am 15 plus years later. And some of the people I had that first six months when I was on LinkedIn, I am still linked to all these years later. And we still kind of circle each other's world in various ways, which is great. So I'm very conscientious of the connections I say yes to. And recently when I moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I got really conscientious of building my network here in Philadelphia. So I think this year out of that 950-ish, about 500 are somewhere in the Philadelphia area because I was very eyes on the prize <laughs> with my LinkedIn strategy when it came to my first connections. A good tip to have a higher conversion rate on your connections is whenever you drop a comment, go and check people that liked it. Because if they liked your comment, internally, when they see your profile picture, they'll be like, I know this guy, click accept without yeah. really thinking about it. Because they've seen you somewhere before, even though they might not remember it was that common. Like I go in, every, yeah. I get the notification likes post. I go in and check it um, mm -hmm. daily. And then I, oh, is this someone I want to meet? Nope. Then I check the other people. Anybody I want to meet, I just hit a, like, a simple connection to. Now that LinkedIn nuked the old way, of, you could just spam up personal connection, like personalized okay. connection. I had to find another way to like build some sort of, reason to connect with me a rapport yeah. yeah i had never thought of that that's ingenious that is a great way to build a very diverse connection base as well too yeah well it's kind of shooting a bit um with what is it 
bird shot. I, it's not the right saying, but that that's what it's actually is. But yep, yeah, that's the right right hey, saying. <laughs> but Perfect. whilst we're in in talking techie stuff, I mm -hmm. know that SEO is also a part of what's important on LinkedIn, getting found, yes. actually getting found in search. So, how does LinkedIn SEO actually work? I think there's a couple layers to that, and because most of my clients and most of my interaction as a business owner is from the business sense, not necessarily the employee sense. What I can tell you is from a business owner standpoint, having two things work positively in your favor, having a company page that you're able to post company based information on, then share it to your main profile, much like you would do with Facebook. That has a clout of expertise with on the platform of LinkedIn. It also provides that SEO aspect because you are posting as your business page or sorry, your company page to your company page, and then you're sharing it to your main profile. So there's almost like a double dipping of the SEO. And I will say when LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to participate in those LinkedIn articles as a contributor, jump at that always say yes because that again makes you a top voice they literally now have badges that they dropped last year and the more that you contribute to articles the higher of an opportunity you get to have that little top voice as part of your profile which looks fantastic so as people are googling your business anyhow and your linkedin profile pops up they click on it and now when it pops up, it has top voice in social selling, in human resources, top voice in content strategy, top voice in business strategy. Whatever your particular niches can be, let them be that. I, for example, had somebody who his overall information is going to be human resources here in the US. And then he has all the funneling and his expertise is salary negotiation. And he is a rock star at this. Here in the US, I think it's one of like five voices that LinkedIn really likes to use. But ironically, down in Brazil, there's a group of about 15 people who for salary negotiations in Brazil, they are the top voices. And it's very fascinating to me because the different types of salary for here in the US versus down in Brazil, it's so different. But the overall thing of, being honest in that process is what my client was really known for. And if he was not able to contribute the way he has for his SEO, nobody would have known. And now that I've gone in and done more optimizing for his particular profiles, both the company pages and his main, I'm hoping his top voice will change a little bit and he'll be able to have a diversification within human resources at a couple other variants, which will be fun. <laughs> Regarding top voices, I'm actually yeah. going to drop the link below for everybody so they can see all of the subjects, just like yeah. the main, main page. Um, you can also just go in and search, like I'm content yeah. marketing top voice. Like you can go and search content marketing, then you get mm -hmm. the subject and then you can just answer. If you yeah. don't like the stuff LinkedIn gives you in the top, because I do content, but LinkedIn just wants me to answer sales questions. Right. I've never been asking. It's... Direct sales, sales this, sales this, sales yes. this. It's a long time since I made a sales post. Like LinkedIn well, was living in, in 2023 last year. So for me, one of the things that I like to do is I like to have more of those niche within a niche things. So I have another client who is in career coaching. So when I go in as her and I answer these questions as her to increase the process, what I really like to do is the, the elements that I know are more finite, where they're not going to be as popular because it's going to be easier for you to gain a top voice badge for those niche within a niche. So that's yeah, another sales thing. Is, sales is difficult if you just do sales overall. And oh, that's yeah. also why I have content marketing. That's actually quite an easy one. It's one of the easier ones. I, I haven't tried too many of that ones, but it wasn't too hard. Yeah, from what I, I, I don't know how I went from three percent to two percent without giving an answer for two for two weeks. 
So I was just say the one thing, apparently don't don't do anything. Well, I think it's also about a a thirty day process, from what I understand. So if you answer a bunch of things this week, by the time they go through the process on LinkedIn's end, if you're going to get a top voice badge, it's going to be about thirty days down the road potentially for what you did this week. So it takes a bit of time to get those voice badges, but if you can, again, consistency is queen, right? If you can get the consistency of spending maybe an additional 45 minutes a week answering those questions and contributing to the articles, you can have a variety of different top voices and you get to choose which top voice you want. So one week you could have content creation, one week you could have sales. One week you could have another type of strategy. You could diversify your top voice badges and essentially just every week change them up. <laughs> and and do remember to like your own response because it's going to put you up. If the guy below or girl below didn't like it, you're going to be on top of him. And everybody's mm-hmm. going to see yours without clicking see more. It's pretty simple. Yeah. LinkedIn is actually one of the few platforms where you should like your own stuff because it definitely helps. Yes. Yes. Put you on top of the feed again. Yeah, articles especially, but also like your own post. Like if I, I I technically, not technically, tactically like my own post because if it gets a lot of traction in the start, then I'll wait a little bit. Click Mm -hmm. like, because then I know it gets thrown to the top of the feed again doesn't really get any traction in the first 10 minutes, then I like my post 10 minutes after because then it gets thrown in the top of the feed again. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a great hack. That's one of those hacks that it can work for some people. I'm not sure if it would work for everybody. You'd have to play with it. And much like other algorithms, right? There's usually a good three, maybe four weeks of testing something out on a platform to see if the algorithms specifically for your internal score on LinkedIn are going to like that particular action item. I figured that for that specific thing, it's not so much to help with the score. It's just more about how like LinkedIn speeds actually work because it shows like when you comment, post, and then like, like Mm -hmm. that's the three things that force the scene in the top of the feed. So you want to, if you can like space those things out, you will, stay up there longer. Um, it's an old trick we learned in Facebook groups, like in trading Facebook groups, where you yep. get, you have to comment your own stuff to actually sell something because otherwise nobody would see you. Mm-hmm. Just So what I like for- to do, because I mentioned that 30 minute window a day, what I like to do for my 30 minutes is I kind of divide it into three categories. I've got my cleanup category, which is where I go in and I clean things up. That's when I'm gonna double check any requests that somebody sent to me to connect or follow their page to um, newsletters to subscribe to, right? I'm gonna do the My Network tab. Any of those new requests, I'm gonna deal with those. Then I'm gonna go to the sent portion within the My Network tab and do the cleanup stage. Look for three weeks or older for any of those connection requests or follower requests, clean those up. That takes about 10 minutes, if that. Then I spend the next 20 minutes really on engagement in general, going through liking things, sharing things. Let's say that you were to post something really powerful. I would share that at roughly my four o'clock time frame. My personal things go out at nine o'clock in the morning. That's gonna be anything to do with my professional development, anything to do with my business, anything to do somehow with motivation from a professional standpoint. And then in the afternoons around four o'clock, that's when I'm gonna share things from my network into my network, right? So that that 20 minutes every day, that's part of what I'm doing is I'm engaging and I'm saying, oh, so-and-so did this great thing for a post. Maybe it's an article they did. Maybe it's an amazing photo that ties back to them winning some big giant award. Maybe they're hiring right? Because there's a lot of people looking for jobs. There's also a lot of people saying, I have jobs, please help me fill them. So I try and share those type of posts a lot of, hey, I'm looking for a job or, hey, I have jobs, please help me fill them type situation. 
And then the other thing I do with that 30 minute block is I'll go in and I will see what is in my feed. I'll see who's in my feed because I'll go weeks without seeing somebody. And then out of nowhere, that person is constantly in my feed. And usually what the algorithms are telling me is that person who I haven't seen in a while, I need to interact with them. And ironically, in the process of me interacting with somebody who I maybe have not done a lot of interactions with of late, it's usually because they've been posting something that correlates to what I've been posting. Usually it's that 9 a.m. content about my elements of my company, my elements of my professional development. And they themselves are either struggling with those or are also having professional wins within that same professional development space, which I like. And that allows a lot more real interaction to happen because you and I, right? We are in two different countries. We are multiple thousand miles apart, right? I don't even know how many time zones, but I see your content quite often because you and I interact on each other's LinkedIn often enough, even though we're in very different parts of the world. And I have connections that are within five blocks of me and I rarely see their content. Plus, they don't know what they're doing, and we do. That's I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so people kind of gotten an, an idea of, of who you are, what you do for LinkedIn. One thing I haven't mentioned is you call yourself the LinkedIn unicorn. And I'm actually kind of curious what that entails. You don't have the hat. The pre oh, you do have the hat. <laughs> I was waiting for you to bring it up. <laughs> so I for years have always had some type of unicorn element. Um, I'm the type of person who has figured out I am who I am. And with LinkedIn, it has become such a fun platform for me to have an expertise in. There are tips and tricks that I know like the back of my hand that just seem to wow and amaze people. So jokingly, and a lot of the networking that I've been doing during 2024, I used to be a networking unicorn. And now people are like, no, 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 you are a LinkedIn unicorn. That is your jam. That is your jelly. That is your expertise. So I do have multiple unicorn horns that people have sent me that I have collected myself. This one was gifted to me from a friend who owns a nonprofit. Her daughter found it in Walmart here in the States. <laughs> and I was like, Miss Katie needs that. That's going to be her unicorn horn. She likes pink and it's sparkly. So for like five it is, rolls, it is. She's I, right. got, I got one, right? And I like the fact that it's a, it's a unicorn because there's elements of LinkedIn I get that most people don't. And what I really like about how I do my LinkedIn optimization process is at the end of it, I give you a blueprint on essentially how you can have your own unicorn moment per se, within LinkedIn. You know what you need to do to keep that internal score. I've spent time raising for you at that level or increase it again. So that element of me knowing what I know does put me in such a unique unicorn category. So I might as well have the unicorn horns. It makes sense. Right? Unicorns are, unicorns are special. Mm-hmm. But I don't ever refer to myself as the LinkedIn unicorn because there's other people who have there multiple LinkedIn unicorns. Right. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there's multiple um, layers. It's like a lasagna, right? There's so many different layers of LinkedIn and there are different unicorns. I have one person who is spectacular at just doing the about section. She can craft an about section that captivates people like crazy. That is her unicorn aspect when it comes to LinkedIn. I have other people who can build really good profiles that are from the company page perspective. So the company page is where they shine. I'm able to blend a little bit of everything together. I'm able to understand the importance of changing your profile image four times a year. Make sure your about section has a cadence to it that was super algorithm friendly and also your voice at the end of the day, because it's the about you section, not the about me section, right? So I need to tap into certain things and that's what allows me to don my unicorn horn as often as I do. Oh, I now understand. 
correct? Yeah. Uh, you're yeah. not going to be catching me, even though I understand wearing a unicorn horn. Oh, you no unicorns here. I mean, look, there's some super masculine ones. Like we could get you some super. You does not have to be pink and sparkly, okay? We could. Also, we could. Imagine people's look. face if I showed up with a now, unicorn. I'm just saying, what if you did it though and had like a Viking vibe? I, like, I would do that. Like I would. Viking helmet. I, 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 I know I could even pull the unicorn horn off because I, I have a good Viking deal to interact with that one. That's apparently, insane. Apparently, the Vi uh, Vikings, the reason why there's such a thing as unicorns is because while narwhals had horns and the Vikings pranked the Scottish saying that their horses had horns. I'll just be showing up to events saying I'm looking for some Scottish people. Showcases and them some Scandinavian horses. I think that I might if I find a cheap unicorn horn, I might actually have to pull that one off. It might get get some attention. I mean, it's funny because this is just part of my branding, right? It's not really necessarily any of my marketing colors for the business. It's just part of the branding. And one of my favorite LinkedIn clients for her branding. She had this beautiful brooch that had been passed down to her from one of her grandmothers. And she wore it as her branding symbol. Everywhere she went, she had this brooch. Even if it really didn't go with her ensemble, she always was seen at networking events. She was always seen in her videos when she would do her own content and became part of that branding. So even in my LinkedIn profile images, you will see me with headshots including my unicorn horns because it's part of who I am as a business professional. My parents do not understand this at all. They do not understand <laughs> the unicorn vibes. They think I am probably batshit crazy to be frank, but they also understand that I do really good things for my clients. And if I have to don a unicorn horn to do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Let the unicorn horn be then. Exactly. Yeah. I, I... If I find a cheap unit, I actually would have to pull that one off. Because to some extent, as long as there's some sort of humorous thing and not taking things seriously in there, then it's on brand. Yeah. Because, yeah. Even though I don't think it's on my profile anymore, but we used to have fun. That's one of the big parts. And it's still, like, essential part of, like, the core values of the business is having fun right. whilst doing business. Otherwise, it's boring as shit and we don't get stuff done. Right. For the people that want to learn more about LinkedIn, they're satisfied. They're still they're, they're still not satisfied. Mm -hmm. Where should they reach you? How can they learn more? What would be some next steps? So easiest thing to do is out on LinkedIn. The company page I have is outside the box solutions with an S. Down that below. is easy. We'll make sure to link it. Yep. That is the easiest way to find me is you hit the follow button. I'm constantly posting. You can go ahead and inbox me there. Another way, obviously, right here, you got Katie Corliss. That is the name that I am on LinkedIn with. I know there are several other Katie Corlisses. I'm with one S, not two. There is uh, four different ways to spell it. Two English, one French, and one that's kind of a bit of both, I guess. <laughs> so. Uh -huh. The Europeans yeah. got too much of a hand in that one. So they just yeah, decided well, to throw letters together. Apparently, too, I'm not big on Max, which is um, a television form here. But House of Dragons, I guess, is a show that stems from Game of Thrones, which was a book that was turned into a TV show, right? And in these Houses of Dragons, one of the houses is House of Corliss, which I find hilarious because it's actually a dragon on your head then i know right i was thinking about that the other day that's the like, unicorn dragon dragon instead. Too. it's gonna be awesome i can be a unicorn some days and the dragon the other days they're both <laughs> blue, a, blue a unicorn head onto the dragon a dragon unicorn see that's unique that's that, that, that i haven't seen that one before that would that's be new. like a hybrid that's like a liger right like a lion yeah. and a tiger together a gryffindor of various <laughs> levels um but yeah, so the easiest way, again, is going to be LinkedIn. I don't really have a lot of other social media because I am a unicorn out on LinkedIn. It's the easiest place to find me, and it's the most consistent place I am at myself. So I'm pretty easily able to be found and communicated with there. No problem. 
Well, in this case, it makes sense to only be on LinkedIn because if people ain't on LinkedIn, they ain't your clients. Right, so exactly. So why be on all the other platforms that have a website? I completely see the reason here. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Katie, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the Business Library today. I of had a real pleasure speaking I had, to you. I had a great time.